Ladies and gentlemen, TED stands for Technology, Entertainment, and Design. In my opinion, a TED Talk is about talent, emotions, and diligence. My talk will be about talent. Now, I think some of you might start to think that this guy thinks too much about himself. He thinks that TED speakers are talented, and we, the audience, are not. This is completely wrong. My talk will show just the opposite in three statements. The first is that any one of you may be talented, and you never know when and how your talent will appear. The second is that all talent needs support, the support of all of you. And the third, that talent and support are supposing each other. They work together, and this is what I call the Tao of talent. Now, how many of you think that we need more talents today than centuries ago? Raise your hands. Many, many people I see. Thank you. I am happy that we share this idea, but have you ever thought about why do we need more talents today than before? The answer is that we have more challenges. We have new problems. And I just mentioned two. The first, that we are, got overpopulated, and therefore we used up the, much of our Earth's resources. The second, that we got overconnected. We are flood by, flooded by information. This sometimes almost kills us, as we have heard. And this all is happening very, very fast. These are very fast changes, challenges, new problems, which need new solutions, which need new talents and new creativity. Now, after all of this, how many of you think that creativity is useful? Raise your hands. Oh, almost everyone. I have to disappoint you. Creativity is not always useful. Let me give you three examples. The first, is my taxi driver who drove me today. Think about if this taxi driver were a creative person, I would be in Vienna by now. I mean, Vienna is a nice city. I haven't been in Vienna for a while. Uh, indeed, it's a nice city, but it's 100 miles away from here, and we are in Budapest, this lecture. I was coming from a medical university. Think about a creative surgeon. Cut here, cut there. This I haven't tried before. It's a nightmare, isn't it? The third example is you yourself. Do you think you are creative now? Mentally, absolutely. But physically, not. If you were physically creative, you would jump all over, you would climb to the ceiling. You, you, you don't do it, because then we couldn't make any lectures. So what is then creativity? Stay tuned. I will give you the answer later, but first, I would like to give you the basic rule what to do with improper creativity. This rule is you should never stop creativity. You should always re-channel creativity. Let me give you a story just to explain this. I was traveling in the Budapest subway a year ago. Budapest subway is a wonderful place to study social psychology, actually. <laughs> and there was a guy, a little boy in the age of five, and his mother. The little boy was showing what the mother was, was teaching you before. Mom, I can grab this handle. And he grabbed the handle. Well, the handle was an invisible handle because the real handle was much higher because he was so small he couldn't reach the real one. But the mother saw the whole thing from a different perspective. The boy was grabbing the handle almost at the armpit of a fellow passenger. So, a social disaster was about to happen. The mother was got very anxious, obviously, and she intervened. Stop it! Immediately! The boy, poor boy, was frightened. He was doing good, he supposed. And the boy's creativity was killed. Four or five such instances more like stop it, 
and the boy would never dare to be creative again. So, you should not stop creativity, you should re-channel it. Now, it's easy to say how to do that in this such situation. The mother might bend to the boy and show him that, wow, this is the invisible handle, grab it here, a completely different location, an armpit-free location, obviously. So what is then creativity? Creativity is to see and to do things completely differently than anyone else would do it. I will give you two examples today. The first is that of Pushkash, the Hungarian soccer legend. Pushkash was dribbling like this. No, no, I will not show it today because my, so I, I, my talent in soccer is so small that I would ruin my whole lecture by showing Pushkash, but you might think about how, how wonderful he did it. But my second example, my second example is that of Mr. Yondo. Mr. Yenő Yondo is a Hungarian piano player. Uh, and uh, he was playing Mozart's piano concerto in E-flat major in, in a be beautiful way. It, it was brilliant. And I was curious, what is the secret of Mr. Yondo? So I listened to the piece several times, all over and over again, and, and finally, I found the secret. His secret was that he did not play a note at a very, very, very special position of this piano concerto right after the note which was before it. Mozart was instructing to play this note right after the previous note. Everyone was playing this note right after the previous one, but Mr. Yondo. Mr. Yondo posed, and this half a second of silence, as we have heard, this made such a tension in this music, which made it unique, which made it brilliant. Now, that, when you do not do something, which everyone else does, may be a great act of creativity. How to be really creative? I will give you three advice. The first is that you should dare to play. How many of you have seen the film Amadeus from Milos Forman? Raise your hands. Many. Wonderful. Then you may remember that Salieri was a contemporary musician of Mozart, and Salieri was actually a quite good musician. Not a genius like Mozart, but a rather good one. And you may also remember the scene when Salieri sat at his piano and he wanted to have a nice piece. He, he badly wanted to have a nice piece of music by the end of the day. Well, by the end of the day, he, he got his nice piece of music. It was indeed nice, but not brilliant. Mozart didn't want anything. Mozart just played with life, with music, and his music was, was transcending any borders because of, this, because of this play. The second advice is that you have to be able to release your first idea to get your best idea. I will explain this by the example of birds. Actually, male birds. For male birds to sing nice, it's a life or death question. If a male bird doesn't sing nice, then he will not be selected by female birds and will not have children. I'm actually very happy that these TED Talks are not such a competition, because then, then it will be much tougher. Uh, to turning back to these birds. Uh, you see on this figure, the vertical scale is the beauty of the song. So you can see that this, this bird boy, at the beginning of the day, sings well, quite bad. But then the song improves. By the end of the day, it becomes quite nice. But see what happens during the night. This bird forgets almost everything what he learned on the day before. Is evolution so bad, producing such stupid birds, forgetting everything? No. If you see it at a greater perspective, then you can see that, that actually the quality of the song is increasing and increasing and the days are passing and passing. Okay, 
But still, this is very inefficient. But there is a trick. This bird and, and the others could never learn their best song if they wouldn't forgotten their first one. So you should also be able to forget your first idea many, many times to get your best idea. This works for quite a while. Now, before giving my third advice, I would, less, I would like to test your creativity. Think about that you are shipwrecked. You are a survivor of a catastrophe at the sea, in the middle of the ocean, in a tiny boat. Your boat has nothing, no engine, nothing. Only you are in the boat. You have only one choice of your survival. I will give you three options. Option A is two liters of water. Option B is two liters of gasoline. And option C is a map and a compass. Now you have to think and vote. Who is voting for option A? Raise your hands. Hmm, quite many. Thank you. Who is voting for option B? Raise your hands. Two, three persons. Who is opting for option C? Well, almost a majority. Great. Thank you very much. Those who were voting for option A and option C, I have bad news. You would die. <laughs> Those few who were voting for option B, those will survive. Why? Your only chance for survival is to get detected, to get observed. If you have two liters of gasoline, you may power it to the water, it spreads, glitters, and you can be visible from miles from the air. You can be even spotted from a satellite. You are visible, you will be rescued, and this is your life. Creative use of gasoline, because you have no engine, obviously, so you couldn't use it in the regular way, is a life-saving creativity in such an instance. Now, let me turn to the last, to, to the third advice. This will be about networks. I, I, am a, I, am a, I am a network scientist, but I promise this will be my only network today. I would like to prove with this network that the support of talent is not recent. It's, it's several billion years old. What you can see on this figure is actually a protein. It's an important protein. This protein is in your liver. Is it a, it's a detoxifying protein. It, it detoxifies the alcohol and all, the, all other toxins in your liver. The dots, the nodes, are the amino acids, which, which are building this protein. The, the blue lines are the chemical bonds between the amino acids. Now you can see two gray arrows. They point to the middle of this protein and highlight two sets of amino acids. A few, only two, three amino acids. These are the most important amino acids in this whole protein, connecting distant regions of this network and doing the job recognizing the toxin and getting rid of it. Now, there are 200 more amino acids. They are doing practically nothing. But there is a trick here. The two or three amino acids in the middle, who are the talented, the creative amino acids, who are doing the job, couldn't do anything without the support, without the surrounding 200 amino acids. Those 200 are necessary for those two or three to be active, to be really creative, to be really useful. Now, our brain is working quite similarly. As you are sitting here and thinking or mind wandering or whatever, your, the, the, some neurons, quite many, are active in your brain. Some neurons are surrounded by other active neurons and, are, and they are supported by these other active neurons. They are in the center. They are the creative neurons. But there is a big difference between the protein and the brain. The protein is rigid. All the times there are the same two or three amino acids in the middle. The brain is highly dynamic. At the next millisecond, a different neuron will be at the center, and the neuron which was at the center is now surrounding as an active neuron the one which became creative in this millisecond. 
So it's a very dynamic situation. A good society should work like the brain. We should let others to go to the center of the stage and to show their creativity and to support them. This is that you should allow each one of you the 15 minutes of fame. Well, actually, uh, the, the organizers of TED are more generous than Andy Warhol was because they allow us 18 minutes, and it's very good because my 15 minutes is already over. Uh, we are not only talking about networks and support, we are also doing it. In Hungary and in the neighboring countries, we, we, we uh, made a talent support network in the last four years, and what you see on this map, those are talent points. We have more than 400 of them by now, and these talent points are places when anyone can go and have advice how to discover and how to develop her or his talent. This community grows, and there are more than 10 countries in Europe by now who will celebrate the Day of Talent in April 2011. And this is growing and growing and growing, and I'm inviting you to join. Talent is growing if it gets support from the society. And society is growing if it gets support from talents. Now, this is what I call the Tao of Talent. To explain you a bit better, I would like to give you the story that I experienced exactly a year ago in Singapore. In Singapore, I visited the Buddha Tooth Relic Center. This is a temple, and this has a giant prayer wheel. This prayer wheel is really big. It is, it is three times larger than you and weighs about six tons. Now, if you would like to turn this prayer wheel, you cannot turn it much faster or much slower as the prayer wheel was turning originally because it is so big. But there is, a, again, a trick here. If you wouldn't push, if you wouldn't add your little push to this turning wheel, it would never turn around. It is needed, your little push, for the whole wheel to turn. So your little push is your talent. The turning wheel is the society. They both need each other to work properly. This is how your talent may become successful, and this is what I call the Tao of Talent. Thank you very much.